Sometimes, you only need a handful of models on screen at any time. However, other times, you may wish to have thousands on screen. But you'll notice that if you just duplicate a model a thousand times, you'll likely run into frame rate issues. So, how do we get from 1000 models and this frame rate of around 10 to something more acceptable with a frame rate of at least 60? There are many different approaches to solving this issue, but one I've been using in my own projects is a project by Unity Technologies which they've called Animation Instancing. You can get it for free from their GitHub repository, and I'm happy to say that I've even made my own contribution to the project in an effort to give back to the developers. In this video, we'll create a scene with around a thousand models and demonstrate the low frame rate. Then, we'll cover how to employ animation instancing to improve it. So, after you clone or download the animation instancing asset from the GitHub repository and extract it, you need to look inside the assets folder and drag over the anil instancing folder into your project. When it's imported, make sure you set your main camera's tag to main camera. This is because some of the animation instancing code refers to camera.main camera, so not having it set will cause errors at runtime. Let's quickly download and import a free model for our demonstration. I'm going to use this zombie model by Pixel Tiger because having a horde of zombies makes sense. When that's imported, I'm going to navigate to the zombie prefab and drag it into my scene. To keep things simple, I'm going to modify the animation controller so the zombie does nothing but walk in place on the loop. Let's run the game and see how that looks. Great, we have one zombie walking on a loop. Now let's make that 1000 zombies. After some patient duplication and repositioning, we have a scene of around 960 zombies. That's close enough for our demonstration. We will refer to them as a thousand zombies to keep things simple. We'll also reposition the camera so that it captures all 1000 zombies and to make sure they're not being cold. Before moving on, we'll also disable all shadows as we're not interested in them for this video. Now let's click run again to see how this runs. Unsurprisingly, you can see we're around 10 frames per second and we have over 30,000 batches. So this is where animation instancing comes in. For convenience, I'm going to create an empty game object and use it to group together all but one of our zombies. This is so I can easily disable them to work on applying animation instancing to a single zombie before applying it to the rest. Animation instancing works with shaders, and the asset comes with a few animation instancing enabled shaders itself. You can of course modify your own shaders to work with animation instancing using instructions from their blog entry, which I'll link in the description, but we'll leave that for another video. For now, let's set all of our zombie materials to use the provided animation instancing shader. You'll notice that the zombie is now invisible, but that is expected behavior at this point. As well as the shader, animation instancing needs two more parts to work. First is the animation instancing manager, which needs to be in the scene, which will add to the directional light because it already exists. Next, we need to add the animation instancing script component to the model we want to use. It's best to add this to the game object, which is hosting the animator component. At this point, you may want to apply the changes to your prefab. Moving on, let's navigate to the animation generator using the animation instancing menu item and then drag in your zombie asset. Make sure to adjust the frame rate to whatever you're targeting and make sure there's a tick next to the animation you plan to use. In this case, it's called walk in place. Now let's click generate and wait patiently whilst the script generates what it refers to as animation textures. Once it's done, you should see a new folder named Animation Textures in the root of your asset folder. If you look inside, you should see an animation texture named after your game object. 
you may need to refresh the folder before it's listed. Now, the next step described in the instructions doesn't always work for me, and I'll show you the error. The instructions suggest that we select Build Asset Bundle by navigating through Custom Editor and Asset Bundle. However, you can see that this has given us an error in this instance. My preferred way of doing this, which works for multiple platforms, is to use the Asset Bundle Browser Package. Let's install it by navigating through Window, Package Manager, selecting All, scrolling down to Asset Bundle Browser and selecting Install. Then we navigate through Window to select Asset Bundle Browser and we can dock this window wherever we like. In the Configure tab, you can see our animation texture is listed and if we switch to Build, we can build the Asset Bundle for our target platform making sure to check the box for copying to streaming assets. If we look back at our zombie model, we can see the prototype field is empty in the animation instancing component. Let's make sure we set the prototype as the zombie game object before moving on and applying all the changes to our prefab one last time. By clicking run, we can see that everything is working for our single zombie. So now let's select all the other zombies and assign the zombie prototype to all of their animation instancing components. And let's enable the parent game object so that they're all enabled. If we click run again, we can now see that all of our zombies are working using the animation instancing. When looking at the stats panel, you can see the frame rate is acceptable and the amount we're saving through batching. In the videos following this one, we'll make sure we enable shadows and then look at modifying a shader to make it compatible with the animation instancing. That's all for this video on animation instancing.